Hey queer friends, are you ready to be inspired? Welcome to season five of Coming Out and Beyond, a podcast that shares stories from the LGBTQIA plus community. Here's your host, Anne-Marie Zanzel. Did you know that there is a directory out there for people who are queer, where we can find other queer owned businesses There's over 15,000 of them, and I have the honor to interview the founder of this great new idea today on my show. So um, Charlie Sprinkman, he is the founder, he, they, is the founder of Everywhere is Queer app. Charlie is based in Portland, Oregon, but currently living short-term in Berlin, Germany. The Everywhere is Queer app is centered around a worldwide map of 15,000 plus queer organizations with 26 different categories to filter between. Yep, you can find your next queer tattoo artist or real estate agent on there. Hi, Charlie. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So happy to be here. I'm so excited. I'm really excited to tell you because to to talk to you because I am on your app. And um, I when you were when you were launching it, I think about a couple of months ago, I noticed it and I was like, I was like, oh, I've got to be on this app because I do a lot of queer stuff. And um, it was it was so nice to find it. And I'm really glad you're doing it. So thank you very much for our community. I think it's a lot of work, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my gosh, hardest thing I've ever done. (laughs) Yeah, usually the best things are the hardest things we've ever done, right? So so Charlie, before we get into the app and what you do, can you tell me your story? Yes, absolutely. Um, Hi, everyone. Um, My name is Charlie. He, they pronouns. I'm 27 years old. I feel so young um, in this world. And uh, I'm originally from small town Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, my goodness. um, It's small town. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I went to university out at uh, university or Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado, where I did happen to study entrepreneurship. Um, not really by choice, more kind of pushed on by my parents, but, um, I started my own business. Um, it really wasn't my plan. I kind of was actually like not wanting to do that, but, um, here we are. Um, but after university, I, I got a job and I was a rep for an organic beverage company. They gave me a van and they said, hit the road, introduce as many people as you can to our product. And I traveled to 41 of the 50 States. This is just about when I had come out. I had come out my junior year of college. So when I was like 20, 21 years old, and then I got this job at 21, 22, I graduated a semester early. So yeah, I was 21 or 22 and um, hit the road and I was freshly out. And so I was like, I want to meet queer people everywhere I go. And, you know, when I would Google search, you know, like queer spots here Mm -hmm. or it always was the gay bars and right, that's you know, it. I, I drink, but like that, I, my mornings, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to hang out at the gay bars every hour of my day, you know? Yeah. So I always wanted to support queer people in my travels and I couldn't find anything. Um, I remember being in New York city and I searched like queer owned businesses in New York and it gave me this Vogue article from 2012. That was like 10 online queer owned businesses to support. And I'm like, this is not helpful. Oh, we got to do better than this, right? Yeah. You saw a need. You saw a I need. I saw a need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just a few years later is when it all came to be, um, you know, summer of 2021, I was volunteering at a queer youth leadership camp called Brave Trails. Highly recommend it for 12 to 18 year old youth. They're um, on the West Coast and now they're branching out on the East Coast as well. But I was driving back from LA to Boulder, Colorado, where I lived at the time. And mm-hmm. After that experience of Brave Trails, it was just so euphoric being in a space of 100 queer people. Um, I was like, how can I build this euphoric feeling at a global scale? And the mm-hmm. idea came to mind on my drive, the name Everywhere is Queer and a worldwide map of queer owned businesses um, connecting us with safer spaces locally and globally. Well, that that first of all, you saw a need. And when we when we see a need, there's those of us like I saw a need for people coming out later in life, yeah. because when I came out later in life, um, I Googled late in life lesbian mm-hmm. and I found one blog mm-hmm. and yeah. that one blog, if you read it all the way through, which yeah. I did, had a Facebook group and yeah. you could join the Facebook group. And yeah. and and eventually that's what I did. 
but yeah. a couple of years later, I started my own business and I, yeah. you know, I, you know, I call myself a coming out coach, but really it's much more complicated than that. But, um, what was really interesting, I built my first website and my website wasn't going anywhere. And I was trying to learn SEO and I'm, I'm a caregiver. I'm not an SEO person. And so finally, after a year, like a lot of new entrepreneurs, you say to yourself, I'm going to hire someone to do this. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't figure this out. Yes. So I did. And I purposely looked for a queer business owner and a queer yeah. woman because I wanted yeah. somebody who understood that experience. Yeah. Um, I was able to find her pretty easily um, because I belong to another big Facebook group called Freelancers. And yeah. I found her on Freelancers. She's since yeah. become my business partner. Oh, wow. uh, I'm going to tell you when she did like her back work to see who else was offering what I was offering, there was nobody. Yeah. I was like, and like that stunned me. It was 2018. And I was the first person to ever like say, you know, like, oh, I can help you talk about this, especially if you're older and you have kids yeah. and all that stuff like that. And now there's a hundred, there's hundreds of us, but yeah. <laughs> years ago there just wasn't. So I understand yeah. of understanding the need, but I'm going to catch you on something. You avoided telling me your coming out story. You told me your <laughs> business story. Uh, so, and by yes. the way, just so you know, Charlie, my youngest goes to CSU. Oh and my he's gosh. There. Yes, he's there <laughs> right now. He, he reminds oh me gosh. actually a little of you. He's sort of, you know, floating through college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was I was just not a very good student. I was like a horrible test taker, but you know, I figured out the system and I actually yeah. graduated with a 3.9 GPA. Um uh, Oh, you're not that bad, honey, then. <laughs> like, I'm not smart, like book smart, you know? I just figured out the system and I think um yeah, I don't know. The, the whole university experience is for some and not for others, you know? And yeah. but yeah, I I would my say my youngest is like that too. Um and and he took a year off and I really like Fort Collins. I think it's a great yeah. city to go to school in. I mean, he's somebody that, you know, skis every weekend for yeah. four days, you know, right. like a lot of the kids there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now tell me your coming out story. Yes. So, and for yeah. your generation, yes. junior and high, junior and college is, I mean, I think you probably might say you're a little later. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, yeah. I don't think you are at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you were right on time in my generation. Yeah. A lot of people came out in college and stuff yeah. like that. So like what, how, like, how did that all happen? Yeah, you know, for me, growing up in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, um, have you ever been to that area or do you? I just know where I've been to, um, what, uh, what's Milwaukee. the capital? Milwaukee, yeah. <laughs> There's Madison and Milwaukee. Madison's the capital, but both are great little liberal bubbles in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I grew up 25 miles west of Milwaukee and I'm, I don't know, an hour from Madison. Um, and I grew up very conservative, very Catholic, every single person in my community, every adult that I knew uh, was conservative. Um, and I remember having one friend in high school who had one liberal mom. And I was like, so intrigued by the way that she looked at the world. The world, yeah. yeah. I just was like, wow, she just speaks so differently and like, is just so accepting of like other people, you know? And uh, I just remember that uh, as a, like a very important to me in high school. But then I went off to university at CSU and all of my friends were liberal and their parents were liberal. And I was like, wait, I don't understand. Like, you know, <laughs> a liberal adult. Like, I couldn't fathom the thought of Me. like. Oh, I've always oh, been a liberal oh. adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, really, I was like, oh, my gosh, you are all liberal. And like, and at my at time in my life, I was like, I'm liberal, I think. But like, really, my like perception of the world and my thinking was actually very conservative because that's yeah. all that I know, you know. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I just, first few years of college were just, you know, making my friends and community and I just made the best community ever. And, you know, they always talked about their like queer friends. So like casually, and so just like openly from like them coming out in high school and none of them were out. Um, some of them are out today, but uh, none of, none of us were out at this time. Um, but then, yeah, my junior year of college, I just... I couldn't hold on to it anymore. And I had been like seeing men at, at like two in the morning, you know, like I was like, yeah. it was, it was just like very closeted and, and I was hiding it. And I just like, I knew that my friends wouldn't care. 
So um, I did, I, I came out to each, I sat them each down and I, I cried and I told them and they were like, I, we, we don't care. Like, this is great. Well, you know, I'm were, curious, is it because you were more worried about your parents and, yes, and your community? So was, I mean, I your was, friends were going to be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially so since out, you had a liberal group of friends. So you were yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I came out to my friends first and I of lived course, about yeah. like five, six months of this like out life in Colorado and not out life in Wisconsin. Um, and eventually I was like, I had a very like extreme moment in my life where I lost someone very close to me and, mm -hmm. um, they had just, yeah, it, uh, I lost them. And <laughs> that was when I was like, life is so fragile. I have to live my most authentic life. And that's when I came out to everyone back in Wisconsin. You know, and it's really interesting to me because in our community, we, we talk about a catalyst yeah. And a catalyst can be a human, you know, you yeah. fall in love with your best friend or you yeah. fall in love with uh, somebody from work or something like yeah. that. But we also put it in terms of a catalytic event, like mm -hmm. something happens and it sounds like you had one, something yes. happens where you're like, life is fragile. Life is short. I have to live my truth. Yeah. I mean, I lost my best friend. Um, mm -hmm. She was 21 years old and, um, yeah, we had an extremely close relationship. And so that just rattled my life. And yeah. that was when I was like, I, I could die tomorrow and I need to live my most, I want to go down having lived my most authentic life. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I came out to my family and, you know, How'd they uh, do, <laughs> I'm just curious. Know, it's, my family's a whole, you know, uh, beast of a, uh, that, they could have a whole podcast on that, but, um, <laughs> my mom honey, we can have a whole podcast on my family and yeah. my kids. <laughs> Um, I'll try to answer it quickly, which I will, but, um, yeah, my mom took it pretty well. My dad's yeah. a whole nother story, but, um, my siblings took it pretty well as, as well. And, you know, to date, um, so this is like six years ago, wild, um, my family and is my number one fan. You know, my mom has an everywhere is queer bumper sticker on the back of her car in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. I get nervous every day. She's going to have flat tires for some reason. I'm like, <laughs> my fault. Um, no, it's not but, your fault. Yeah. If she gets fat tire, flat tires, okay. it's the person that did it. That's whose right. fault it is. <laughs> um, she's also and, a good mama. She's yeah. supporting her child. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, she's, she's my number one fan. So mm -hmm. I couldn't be more grateful. Um, and yes. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's interesting. Your, your story is, um, very similar. And I always say that to people. I, I say that, you know, people come out later, people come out earlier, um, really doesn't matter. The stories really do have very similar threads to them. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate, I'm really glad that you found community in college. A lot of us talk about that, but you know, what's really interesting with the late in life community is that a lot of times people did have relationships in mm -hmm. college. They had boyfriends or girlfriends. I just work with women. So, yeah. you know, they did, they did have girlfriends, but, you know, they had such pressure to conform, especially yeah. as women. You're lucky you're, um, you know, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> as women, we're really pressured to conform. And, and even people of your generation are also really, depending on who their family is, you know? Yeah. 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 I always say to my son, I said, please date all kinds of people. Yeah, <laughs> college and figure it out, you know, yeah. I, because you can wow. be so like, cool. I, you know, but I mean, like, well, because I wish I had done that. Yeah. If yeah. I had done that, maybe I would have figured things out, but I was too much. I was Roman Catholic. I was too much yeah. of a conform formist and, you yeah. know, wanted to make to make mom and dad happy. So, you You've know, seen heart stopper. Um, I haven't yet, but I have several clients that are, um, their kids are watching it right now. I just like can't imagine as a kid watching this or even like, like how mature I'm like these high schoolers are. I'm like talking about like boundaries and consent and like, but like in like, I feel like Heartstopper does it in a true, like a really natural way. Like it feels real. And um, I, gosh, I'm just like, wow. The fact that kids are watching this today, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I'm young, but I did not have anything like that. You know, everything I was watching was heteronormative, like, you know. <laughs> well, I found that, um, okay, so my children are your age. Yeah. So I found that um, uh, when my youngest, who's the 21-year-old, um, that it started to change. My older children, who are 28 to 33, okay, they were 
in the same kind of genre. My second child came out when they were 27. I mean, you know, um, so I I found that that, you know, you guys, um, you know, younger millennials um, didn't have the representation, but the Gen Z's have had the representation. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, And and I'm very happy for them because um, uh, 30% of all Gen Z's identify somewhere in the queer community. Now, I don't know if they will in the long run, but as of this point, as they, and I love that. And it's, and it's because of representation. Yeah. It's because of representation yeah. with my community, yeah. that the older community, that yeah. people are coming out. And so representation is so important. It's so important. And I mean, it's so like subconscious too, you know, a big reason why I started Everywhere is Queer is like, I, I, if I would have known of a queer coffee shop in queer owned coffee shop in my hometown, I would have gone there in high school and sat there and just seen queer people exist as a closeted kid, mm-hmm. just to see queer people exist. I mm-hmm. wouldn't have, I mean, maybe I would have come out, but I don't, I mean, like, that's why I created Everywhere is Queer is to allow us to just be surrounded. And, you know, obviously I want us to meet queer people, but just mm-hmm. to see people is so mm-hmm. validating to our experience, at least mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> okay. So you start, let's talk about the app. I'm really yeah. excited about it. Um, and um, so you started it because you saw a need. You're traveling yeah. around and um, you're trying to find, you're recently out, you're trying to find queer spaces. Yeah. You're finding articles from 2012. Yeah. Which I think, what were you, like seven or eight then? <laughs> no, you were like 10 then or something yeah. like that, you know, <laughs> maybe a little older. So yes. you're finding um, stuff from, you know, and you're like, this isn't working. And so tell me the journey of building the app. Yeah. Um, I am no developer or techie or like anyone like that is actually like, that's, yeah. Um, And so when I saw the need, I was Googling and Googling, of course, when you start a business, anyone out there wanting to start a business, first things first, make sure it doesn't exist or like, you know. (laughs) Or if it does exist, you can improve on it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, And I did not find anything. I found small little localized maps. Like I did find one for New York City that was like more um, queer owned bars, like only. It wasn't like, you know, a full directory of like 26 different categories or something. Um, And so I was like, I think I could make this. And so I was just Googling how to make like a simple free map or like to map Mm -hmm. out things. And it all started with a Google form that I overlaid onto Google My Maps. Mm -hmm. And look back on my social media content, or uh, just if you can find articles of our first map, it is hilarious. I am colorblind. It is so (laughs) ugly. The pins are like massive. And I I was just like, have run this business a little bit by the seat of my pants. And I'm just like, I get that. I'm not going to make it perfect. I'm just going to make it so it's functional and we're going to keep moving Mm -hmm. forward and we'll make it better and better. And so I went live with that version of the map. January I relate to that so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's my advice to entrepreneurs though, is like, it's, it's never going to be perfect. Like you oh. can make it really darn good, but just know you're still going to have an issue, but it's okay. Keep moving forward and you can. Well, yeah. And everybody you're new, you know, yeah. and you're not going to do it perfect. And like I said, like I built my first website, it sucked. Yeah. And yeah. also too, there's a picture from Canva, on my yeah. first website banner. Yes. No, I mean, Canva, like, it, like it was like, now I look back and I'm like, oh my God, that's so janky. But I think also as consumers of, um, even in the last six years of consumers of stuff online has yeah. gotten much more sophisticated. Yeah. Like my yeah. stuff now, the tools holy, that we have now are yeah. just, you know, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. It's really wild. Um, so yeah, I went live with that January 2nd, 2022. I, I still, I laugh about this because I did get uh, my logo made by a queer person that I had been referred to in LA. Um, they helped me out and I posted my logo with just like a white background, my circle logo, like also again, Charlie, like not cute, but uh, <laughs> okay. um, we could have like put in some design here with the logo, but no, I just, just my logo that said everywhere is queer. And I said a worldwide map of queer owned businesses. And I scroll back and I remember celebrating like my first thousand followers in five days or something like that. Like it, got, it people just started like sharing it a little bit. And then uh, February or March of 2022. So just two or three months in, I got an interview with uh, Now This, uh, mm-hmm. which is a massive media site. Um, Fox Media is, I think, who owns them. But 
that went out to about 90 million people. Wow. Uh, and suddenly there was like a lot of eyes on everywhere is queer and uh, social media has just started to spike by a few thousand. And um, yeah, I we can laugh about this. They put me out on the um, Now This Women's channel, uh, which I do not identify as a woman. I am not a woman. Um, <laughs> but it's because of my higher voice that I like literally talked about in the video of why I want to be in safer spaces. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Well, and it's also... If it's, I'm, I mean, are we going to assume that everybody that works for Fox is, uh, has similar values, you know, and, you know, oh, yeah. because you identify I mean, was, as a gay man, Vox. they put you. With a... It was, it was Vox News, V-O-X. Oh, Vox. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fox like, News, I'm like, there's, I don't expect anyone to, yeah, you could. Yeah. Uh, I was like really curious about that. No, no, Vox, V-O-X. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so. I had that um, PR hit, which was like really great. And then um, CNN picked me up and I was chosen as one of 30 queer trailblazers next to Jojo Siwa, Lil Nas X. It's a Charlie Sprinkman queer mapper. <laughs> it was hilarious. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that kind of just started to to kind of come out. And then I just built on it with social media and then social media and like Instagram really primarily. Um I had some viral videos of saying, hey, I'm building a worldwide map. It's free to join. It's free to access. Um, and I mean, let's see. Uh, I went at that, you know, with just our website based map for uh, till October of 2023. So mm -hmm. I watched January. A year and a half. Yeah. 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 You're working on it. And that's uh, when I um, got a big brand partnership on social media for the first time. I had, I don't know, I don't know how what my following was at that point. Let's just say 80,000. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a big brand partnership and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I could do this on my own. And mm -hmm. then I had a viral video happen. And then I had my developer email me from that video. Um, mm -hmm. He reached out and said, hey, I saw this. Um, I'm a developer. I would love to build this into an app if you see fit. And I was like, I have no budget to pay a developer to develop an app, but it is a goal of mine. And he was like, let's hop on a call. We figured out a contract in October to February 20th of 2024, we developed our app. Um, and February 20th, we went live. Um, we've had 135,000 people download our app. Uh, it's mm -hmm. free on iOS and Android. And mm -hmm. that's where we are today, you know? So, well, so let me ask you some questions. What's the biggest challenge about building an app? Just the app or the whole business? Just the app and then we'll get to the business. Yeah. All the regu regulatory, is that the word? Laws uh, when you go global. You know, we have to abide by a lot of laws when we're outside the United States. You know, the EU has different laws to, yeah. So um, it was so much work and research to like make sure that we're abiding by all the laws and, you know, that part. Um, and then just... Uh, like a campaign and launching an app is like, yeah, I can post on social media, but I'm like, we have to like, I had 125 global interviews that were going out on the day that we launched the app. I was live on Portland, Oregon's news um, in that uh, in that morning at 7 a.m. And like, whew, it was just, um, and I did it all by myself. I mean, Chris worked, my developer worked five hours a week and it was just me, you know, so it was just so much coordination and um yeah. so you did all those interviews ahead of time i'm assuming yeah. obviously yeah. um and um how did you get i'm just curious from a business standpoint how did you yeah. get them to coordinate it to to launch to, to to say it that day not every everybody live on the 20th yeah. but i tried to get as many as possible to like you know launch the stories on the 20th anytime mm -hmm. after so 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 as somebody who runs an online business i'm just gonna say kudos to you honey because <laughs> first of all you're doing it all by yourself um yeah. hopefully you have a, a a va now or something somebody to help you um you should maybe think about that <laughs> but i have someone five hours a week i have an admin assistant five hours a week <laughs> designer five hours a week and then my developer five hours a week but I am so ready for some full-time staff we just don't make enough money yet but we're we're getting there yeah and I just want to say kudos for you because I know it's a labor of love what yep. you do yep. and 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 it's born out of personal experience yep. I think that's what makes people who build businesses this way um 
it, it's what fuels us. Um, yeah. you know, I've been on a, hundreds of podcasts I've, you know, and, um, but I really admire your fortitude and also your thoughtfulness ahead of time to like say, okay, you know, I've got to do these interviews. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you, since you're not working with anybody, do you have anybody you bounce ideas off of? I mean, I, I network, like I have entrepreneurs that I talk to five of them uh, once a month and mm-hmm. they've been my lifeline for just like uh, keeping my ideas fresh and stuff like that, but not like I don't have a board. Uh, we're in, uh, I'm not a nonprofit. So um, yeah, I kind of, my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the hardest thing? Okay. So the app, I didn't realize about all the regulations, if you're going to do a global app. Um, yeah. I just quick, quick question, just stupid curiosity. What's your, what is the country that surprised you the most that you have people yeah. signing up? The UK completely yeah. popped off. They were the first country outside the United States to like really grasp on to um, EIQ. And it's just incredible. Like uh, you open up the UK and it's just pins everywhere. Um, wow. But at the same time, when I post on social media, I have no idea where it's going to go. I have mm-hmm. completely no control. And so I'm like, I would love to reach more places, but like, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah um, the- you know, um, yeah, it's interesting. We'll talk about, I'm just thinking about some people that I know that do this type of work and mm-hmm. if I can connect you with them or not, because I've connected with, um, a, a, it's called Shikomi and it's um, a woman, it's for podcasting and right. um, it's a woman led podcasting. And basically what they've done is they've been able to get podcasts on the old flip phones. Okay. So they can get, because most of the world uses the old flip phones and um, they don't use our, and I think I'm sure you know that because of the work yeah. you do. And, mm-hmm. um, and so I've, I've partnered with them to like get what, because I work with women to yeah. get uh, my information in my podcast to them. Yes. And, and so it's, I mean, it's all through Africa and Asia and all that stuff like that, which is yeah. really, really cool because yeah. it's, it's for places where being queer and being gay is still considered really wrong. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what surprises me for this podcast is India. Yeah. A lot of people in India listen to this podcast yeah. and, so cool. and that just blows my mind. Yeah. That means, that's so cool. Yeah. So anyway, so building your business. Yes. What's the hardest thing about building the business, not the app? Making money to run a business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, this is a community resource. It's free to download. It's free to access. It's free to be on it. If you are a queer owned business, I've chosen those things because I want it to be accessed by the people that need it the most. And a lot of queer people don't have money. Correct. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's like, I've built this out of the kindness of my heart and I quit my corporate job in October of 2023. Mm -hmm. And I was making money via like a lot of social media partnerships at that point. You know, I have 150,000 followers on Instagram and brand partnerships were at their peak high at that point. And um, yeah, so it's just been so difficult and how to run my business in a way that I could hire people to help me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm getting so tired of doing every single thing, you know? Right. Um, And I know that this resource needs to exist. Um, It's just yeah, figuring out a way to financially do this where I'm not just taking money from queer people, but I'm also, you know, like, yeah. So it, it's just been a really big uh, challenge to do it in like an ethically, and not in like I'm taking money in a bad way, just like uh, in a way that our community will appreciate it as well, you know, and not get mad at me. <laughs> well, this is the thing. What I have learned from running this business is that there, there'll be always people mad at you about something. Right. I have, I've and, gotten over that one. I've yeah. And it's, thing. it is what it is because yeah. they're projecting stuff, their own stuff on you that has nothing to yeah. do with you. Yeah. So I've learned that, it, you know, what's the hardest, I think for me, one of the hardest parts is being the coach counselor and also the woman that owns the business. Yeah. So I have to talk money with people. Yeah. And, and that can, I've gotten, I've done so much money work and I really advise you if you to do some work around your feelings about money and stuff like that, because it's really, 
like you, that was, that's what trips us up a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but that's the hardest part is like, you know, being the counselor coach and then also the woman that owns the business. And so then I have to negotiate my contracts with my people, the people I work with. And I want to get to the stage where I have a business person. Yes. Handles that. And I can just be the nice coach and counselor. Yes. Yes. You just do what you're showing up to do, you know? Yes. Yes. And that's that's the hard, that's the hard part. I'm like such the visionary, the brains, the innovation, the like, um, gosh, I mean, I have a list of 37 ideas, uh, that I want to like bring into the app that like, I'm just like such the like big ideas person. I'm not the like extremely organized, like project manager, like that's so not who I am. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll come up with the ideas. Someone else needs to execute, you know? Um, well, I, I am, I hear you because I'm another, I have always a million ideas and I feel like I am the visionary and I'm getting to the point where I just want to do that. Yeah. Same. I don't want to do the other stuff. Same. I don't either. You know? Um, so so let me ask you. Keeper and that stuff, yeah. You know? yeah. So that. how do people find the app? How do they yeah. download it? Let's do the practical stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Again, free on iOS and Android globally. Um, it's called everywhere is queer. Um, make sure to give us a five-star review. We're rocking a five, 5.0 on iOS right now over like 400 reviews too, which is really great. Um, and yeah, everywhere is queer on Instagram and TikTok. If you don't have access to iOS or Android, you can visit, um, view our map on our website at everywhere is queer.com. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me about if you're a business owner. So if you're a business owner and you're like, oh, I've got to put my, my, tell me the different, yeah, tell me the different levels of how someone can cooperate as a business owner, because now that I've met you, I want to, I, I want to cooperate more because Mm -hmm. you're, you have a vision and I love to support, I'm somebody who has visions. So you have a vision and I want to support people that have visions. So tell me about all the levels people can support you. Um, if you are a queer business owner, you can apply via the profile tab of our app. Again, it's free to join a very short application. Um, your All applications come through me. So I've approved all 15,200 plus organizations on our platform. I approve every single update made to any listing on our platform as well to make sure that our resource stays as true and authentic as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, So yeah, you'll apply via the profile tab of our app. Once you apply, again, it's free to join, but you'll see that we have a few opportunities to become a founding supporter of Everywhere is Queer. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want to go on our monthly plan, it's $29 your first month and then $49 any month, reoccurring month after that. We do have a six month plan and which is $39 a month, I think. (laughs) And then we have a 12 month plan, which is $36 a month. Um, if you choose our 12 month subscription, you earn a one-on-one call, 30 minute call with me monthly for each 12, uh, for 12 times. So once a month with the whole goal of bringing my visionary and brain to your business to help expand and grow your business. And, and I've learned a lot and I've built this business. So I would love to share this knowledge with these other small business owners. So that's a perk um, of the 12 month subscription. Um, and so when people list their business, and is there any other ways that they can, if they're not low, like, oh, I'm a little nervous about a subscription. Is there yeah. any other ways that they can um, um, utilize the app to promote their business? Yeah. Um, I didn't even say the perk of becoming a founding supporter. So I'm just going to answer that. Your sure. organization shows up at the top of the list in app. You mm-hmm. also get added into a private discord server with 300 plus other queer entrepreneurs, allowing you to connect with them. Uh, locally, the ones that are locally in your region, and then ones similar to the category of work that you're doing. So you can Mm -hmm. network with other coaches and see what platforms are using and what payment processing are you using? You know, what's your marketing strategy? So yeah, Mm -hmm. allowing people to other entrepreneurs to network together. Um, Other opportunities on every Tuesday and Thursday, we send out a 10 business highlight. So um, when you log into your admin portal, which is that same area where you'll apply to be on our platform, via the profile tab of our app. Um, you can sign up for one of these newsletter slots. It's $20 to $15, 20 to $50 sliding scale per slot. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes out to our 55,000 plus email subscriber list where we have mm-hmm. a full 50% open rate. So, um, Which is really good. Very dedicated audience. It's a huge yeah. 
when my you get it, yeah, my four percent open rate. <laughs> yeah, my um, my mine is like 40, 45 for my audience too, and that's yeah. you know that's a real, really, and that's a great question to ask if someone. And just a little tip for y'all: if yeah. somebody says, "Hey, be on my email list," ask them yeah. how many people open their emails because it's not worthy to it's not worth being on an email list when there's only there only three percent are opening. Yes, it. whether they have you know fifty thousand people on their yeah. email list, you totally. know the importance of who opens it and. And I was thinking about doing this with Charlie's business as well. And I, that's the first question I asked. I said, what's your open rate? <laughs> yeah, that's you know? good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you move forward, I'd love to talk about this is just the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, this is just the beginning. Yeah. And you're the big ideas person. Yeah. So where is your next? I, and also to... From a mom's perspective, you're working too hard <laughs> and you're giving too much away, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> but you I know. understand, I, I understand that it comes from a place of wanting to serve and wanting to help. So I understand that. And yeah. that's a lot. I, I can understand now when you're giving a half hour a month to somebody and yeah. you, that that's your time is gone. So, yeah. um, so let me ask you a couple of questions. Where do you see yourself? Like, yeah. what do you want to do? What's the next big project? Because a lot of times people who are visionaries get bored and yes. they on to something, the next thing and leave, you may leave this to somebody else or a company that runs it, who knows? Um, so where do you see yourself? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I have a list of like 35 ideas that I want to integrate into this platform. I would like to become the global resource for our queer, trans and ally community. Mm -hmm. uh, I want our community to think of our app when in almost every move, you know, it's like, yeah, our water broke. Let's try to find a queer plumber so we can feel safe when someone enters our home, mm -hmm. uh, we need my house, a queer real estate agent. But I'm, I'm really thinking beyond our current offering. You know, I'm like thinking about the healthcare industry. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about tourism or when we travel, where do we stay? You know, what do we do when we are there? You know, beyond just going to, you know, a queer retail, retail owned shop. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a lot of ideas. I'm not going to give them all away, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, just so many more ways to connect our community with spaces, experiences. Um, yeah. I hear you. I feel like, um, you know, community is so important to us. And yeah. for those of us who haven't experienced exclusively queer space, I think that would be my number one rec coming off of being in Provincetown last week or the week before. Um, it, it is really important. It is really important to be in a queer space and experience it. Whether you're a young queer thinking, maybe I'm not straight or an old queer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, it, the only time I have ever, like I, since I live such a heteronormative life for so long, the only, like, there are times when I'm in queer spaces where I step back and I just observe and experience the joy at the same time. Yeah. I feel the Being same with way. a group of queers because yeah. there's, it, it's, 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 it's about community. It's about having the same experiences. Yeah. It's about understanding what it's like to yeah. lose privilege. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And so having that experience is so helpful to people. And I think, and I agree with you, um, travel is one way to do it. And, yeah. and, you know, and there's not a lot of, there's some queer people places out there for travel. Um, but a lot of times it's very overpriced in the lesbian world. There's something called Olivia travel. It's like, I was looking at something, it was like 10,000 a person to go. That's for the rich gays. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, we do not need that. Yeah. <laughs> For any age, you got to go to Portland, Oregon, if you haven't been yet. Oh, I mean, I've there been. Are queer yeah. cities, a lot of queer spaces. I've been to 47 of our 50 states. Um, Portland just blows my mind at the, like, just the the amount of queer people. <laughs> the pull up our well, platform, you can the search. North it. It's yeah, the, I'm sorry. We're talking oh. over each other because of the delay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, if you pull up Portland on our platform, it is the city with the most listed queer owned businesses right now. I live there. So I have like networked the heck out of that city, but we have almost 800 queer owned businesses listed in Portland, Oregon. That's so cool. So That's cool. so cool. All right. 
So let's start. I end the show by asking um, three questions. And so one of my questions for you is, did you have a coming out song? Did I have a coming out song? Um, I have to be honest, the song that comes in my head and like, not embarrassing, but it's the Macklemore song. Um, the, what is, I, what's it called? Yeah. Where she says she, they, they do. She keeps me warm at the end. Yes. Yes. That song. Yes. That's, That's not song embarrassing. That That's not embarrassing. Nothing's song. embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, like, so, so one of the ways, you know, that you're, you may not be straight is that when they sample the Mary Lambert at the end of the song and you cry. Yes. They, it was the part where um it was like um something about like your uncle and like drawing yeah. or something like yeah. that. Like, I was just yeah. like, wow, this hits uh, this hits hard at home, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that song and that like and um he did that when they were trying to um pass gay marriage. Yeah, and I do know that. Yeah. 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 So um, but it's a great song. And I understand that song brings a lot to me too, because when she's talking about she keeps me warm. And yeah. I used to cry when I hear that's like, maybe you should pay attention to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So a book or movie that changed your perspective and life. And I love this one. Go ahead. Book or movie. Um, it was a TV show you put down. Oh, okay. I was like book or movie. I'm like, can I say my TV show? <laughs> <laughs> um, Pose. Pose by far, you know, oh, I show. love Pose. I just, uh, I watched uh, Paris is Burning first, which I highly recommend for everyone. Watch Paris is Burning and then watch Pose um, and uh, change. I would disagree. I would say watch Pose first and then watch Paris is Burning because I did that. And okay. I watched Paris is Burning because I know it's a historical gay movie. And yeah. so we wa- and my wife and I watched it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't really get the point. Like, yeah. I just didn't understand it at all. And then mm-hmm. I watched Pose. Mm-hmm. And then I went back and watched Paris is Burning again. And I'm like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> now you get it. Yeah. 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 Um, what did you like best about that show? Um, I just think it tells a real story of mm-hmm. our community and how Especially hard it is me. felt in my heart these characters like they're mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah so. um and what I love is that it highlighted the um uh, the stories of people of color um the global majority yeah it, it highlighted the stores the stories of the global majority with very yes. few intersection of white people mm-hmm. um which I really really loved and mm-hmm. I also learned a lot about um, the AIDS crisis and how even in the AIDS crisis, they, you know, people of color didn't get the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and and I love, I've always been a huge fan of, um, oh, what's his name? Pray tell. Um, yeah. What's, I you remember saying? Yeah. I, I yeah. Um, I, my wife and I went to see him in um, St. Cool. In uh, Louisville and cool. um, he, uh, and now this Billy, is it Billy? I can't remember his name. This is gonna, thank you. Yes. <laughs> and also too, um, it was just such a great show. So I understand. Um, how did it change you? The, the question is, how did, you know, what book changed your perspective? On yeah, it? Did I mean, it, change it just you? opened my eyes to uh, our BIPOC of people of color community, you know, mm-hmm. and their experiences. This was in the 80s um, and a lot about the ball scene, Um drag queens, but a lot of trans women, uh, and their, their experience in, in New York city. Um, Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, it, it just, I just, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like they, just the inclusivity that they had, but also didn't have, but the community, it's the community that they found, Mm -hmm. they found each other, you know? Yeah. They became chosen family, which I know sounds cliche, but it's actually really, really really right. Yeah. 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 Is everything. So yeah. yeah. Well, you know, just from a perspective of somebody who was around when Madonna was became popular. Yeah. Um, I like didn't realize that strike the pose. She ripped yeah. off totally from that yes. community yes. and made millions of dollars yep. off of that. And yep. I mean, I know she was a huge, I mean, I know she was very involved in the queer community when yes. she was younger and stuff like that. But it, it's just like, to me, I didn't realize like, that's like, oh, that's where she got <laughs> Yeah, that's where most of our things come from. Not yeah, I know but other communities. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, so, how would you describe your life today, Charlie? K. 
chaos. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just traveling Europe for three months. It's been an absolute blast. Um, but just figuring out next steps of like how to scale a business the right way and like what, it, what way to go, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's just a, you know, you had mentioned like, this feels like the start. This feels like 10 years of my life. I've been doing <laughs> it. But, um, it is the start. And I need to remind myself that. And like, it's such an exciting time and I just need to, you know, don't forget to like slow down and forget what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, this, this does feel like the next chapter and I'm, I'm yeah. really excited, you know? Yeah, I can tell. Um, so how do people find you? Yeah. Uh, Social at media links. Queer on yep. Instagram and TikTok. Um, you can join our newsletter. We highlight 20 queer owned businesses from our platform a week, mm -hmm. um, which you can join via our website uh, at everywheresqueer.com. And you're also on Instagram and TikTok at the same yeah. where at the same name. Yeah. So no lo no longer under Charlie, but always under everywhere is queer. Yeah. Everything, nothing's under really Charlie. It's all everywhere is queer. Um, mm -hmm. is the socials for the business. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for all yes. the hard work you've put on. Um, I understand, and yeah. it is such a giving of self. Yeah. And um, I appreciate you know. Um, so in my background, I'm an ordained minister. And um, it is definitely a ministry you're doing it. If you don't want to use that language, it's definitely um, something where you are showing great care for people. And mm -hmm. I hope that you continue to do that. I am excited to see, I'll be able to say, I had Charlie on my show five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and because I love meeting queer entrepreneurs. I used to do an entrepreneur show called uh, a Queer Business Success. So I'm really excited to meet other queer entrepreneurs. And thank you so much for your time today. I know you're really busy and I really appreciate it. And so thank you for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Coming Out and Beyond, LGBTQIA plus stories with Anne-Marie Zanzel. New episodes of the Coming Out and Beyond podcast drop every other Friday. You can tune in at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and at annemariezanzel.com. Be sure to hit subscribe when tuning in so you never miss an episode. And for more resources, articles, videos, and a free downloadable guide for coming out later in life, visit annemariezanzel.com.